Okay, so this is very cool. We get this embossed Star Wars writing right here, and then you get this read up on the Stormtrooper or the First Order Stormtrooper. If you want to read that, pause it now. Yeah, enjoy squinting. And then on the back, you get these holes right here in the back of this slip cover right there, and it says First Order Stormtrooper, Disney, and the contents inside. And then on the side, you can see the embossed Stormtrooper right there. And then uh, lift this up right there, you can see the figure inside looking really, really cool. And on the side, you get Star Wars, the Black Series, and on the back, you can see the booklet right there. And then there's Stormtrooper again. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's our new Stormtrooper out of the packaging. I really like the design for the new First Order Stormtroopers. These just look really cool. And I really like this figure a lot, man. I just think the Stormtroopers are badass overall. And I just, again, I love the new design. Now, there are some gripes that I do have about the figure. First off, he does not have double jointed elbows. That's very frustrating because you can't get him in your classic Stormtrooper pose where he's just standing there and holding his blaster. So that's a bummer. But other than that, for the most part, a really cool figure. A really cool accessory with this exclusive is you get the evolution of the Stormtrooper booklet over here, and I really dig this, man. So you can lift this up right there, and you get a page of nothing. It just says evolution of the Stormtrooper, and then phase one clone trooper right there, and then we have a little bio. If you want to read that, pause it now. You can see the weapons, and you get this clear sheet right here. And there's the phase one clone trooper, and then phase two clone trooper. Then there's a read up. If you want to read it, pause it now. Then here's his weapons. And then there it is. And then you get the Imperial Stormtrooper. Okay, that's terrible. And then you can read that if you want to pause it now. You can see his weapons right there. Then lastly, oh, there's a Stormtrooper again. Then lastly, the First Order Stormtrooper number four. And then you can see his weapons right there. Yeah, that is very, very cool. And there it is. And then you get these two blank pages just for notes. Yeah, field notes, right on. So we get two weapons with this figure. You have the small blaster right over there. The actual name is classified, as you saw in the booklet. And I like the paint on this. You get some nice white right there with some silver on top of it. And the black looks pretty good. Nice detail sculpted in here, so I think this looks pretty awesome. I'm digging this. It also has this little piece right here that sticks out in the side so you can't attach it to his hip as you saw earlier. So just get that attached right now. There it is. It looks pretty good. And you could also do the same thing with the larger blaster that he has over here, which I prefer out of the two of them. This is really dope. Looking a lot more like the classic Stormtrooper blaster. I like that. A lot of paint detail on this though. I'm really digging that. That is awesome. Nice silver right over here. And for your Stormtrooper Blaster comparison, here it is next to the Imperial Stormtrooper Blaster. So, yeah, they're very similar. And then same thing with the Clone Trooper right over there. Clone Trooper is much larger. And I just really like the look for these new First Order Stormtroopers. They just look awesome. Introducing the Star Wars Anakin to Darth Vader color change lightsaber from Hasbro. Experience the epic change from Anakin Skywalker to Darth Vader. Push the button to battle like Anakin and the lightsaber will ignite blue. Press and hold the button and the lightsaber will struggle with the force, flashing back and forth between blue and red, ultimately staying red so you can battle like Darth Vader. You can also turn the lightsaber off and then on again to switch from blue to red. The Star Wars Anakin to Darth Vader color change lightsaber is for kids ages 4 and up. Requires three AA batteries. Demo batteries are included. The Star Wars Anakin to Darth Vader color change lightsaber from Hasbro. Hey guys, Jeff from TTTM here with the Star Wars Desert Land Speeder from Hasbro. This Star Wars vehicle is based on a background ship from the movie Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens. The speeder is for the 3.75 inch scale figures and includes one special edition figure of Finn in Planet Jakku outfit. Finn is slightly articulated and comes with a blaster. The speeder has a cockpit built for two figures. Its weapons include a top gun turret that turns and a front cannon that launches a projectile when you press the button on top. There's also storage for the second projectile next to the cannon. Although Finn might not appear in this speeder in the movie, we do know that he makes it to Jakku and this land speeder is designed to hold up to desert conditions. That makes it perfect for creating, staging, and playing out original Star Wars Jakku adventures. It's for Star Wars fans ages 4 and up. We think kids who see and like the movie will also like playing with this land speeder, and older fans and collectors might want it to display, especially if this is the only way to get the special edition figure. The Desert Speeder comes with two projectiles and one figure. 
the two characters on the box front are not included. The speeder required some minor assembly and has two decals that need to be applied. The instructions are excellent and took us just a few minutes to complete. The Desertland speeder is available now, so check it out. And for where to buy and current prices, check us out. Hey everybody, welcome to another Foosh video review. This time we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Star Wars Black Series 6 inch Darth Vader figure. The main man himself is finally out and hitting store shelves and pegs as we speak. I was lucky and found mine this evening at a Walgreens store of all places. So sit tight while we get this guy freed from his packaging here and we're going to take a look and see what Darth Vader has to offer. Sit tight. <laughs> Here he is, 6 inch Darth Vader, finally after all this time. Now VB has already done a very excellent and very thorough review of this figure on the main site, so I'm just going to be hitting on some of the bullet points here. Now one difference between VB and myself is, while VB isn't the biggest fan in the world of soft goods, I kinda am. I've, I've been an, a 3A collector for several years now, and I'm totally on board with soft goods. I love seeing them incorporated with 6-inch figures. But that is to say, I love to see it when it's done well. And Vader here is kind of a mixed bag in the soft goods department. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, it looks, when I, when I look at him just like this, just like kind of like in a vanilla pose like this, I think he looks pretty good. I don't think he looks bad at all. I think it does, it does him justice. But, I mean, some of the cloth, it's just so, there's not a lot of detail there. It just seems like, like big pieces of fabric. Like, if we take a look at his, his kind of, I don't know what to call it, but his skirt, for example. We go down, which goes down, here, like his legs here from his belt. It's just kind of just one long, black, kind of not detailed lump of plastic, or of fabric, rather. And it actually begins up here where his like silver shoulder pads kind of start. So that looks a little strange too. I mean, there's a lot of great intricate detail in his arms and in his chest, and everything that's plastic is sculpted pretty darn well here. But then, like, I'm not really sure what the soft goods are really adding to it, adding to the sculpt. In fact, it may be kind of detracting from it a little bit. Um... I don't know. I mean, I, I think the soft goods on this Darth Vader figure is going to be kind of like a line in the sand for the line for a lot of collectors. A lot of people are going to hate it. And then there's going to be people like myself who really want to like it, but maybe I'm going a little bit easy on it just because I want to like it. I don't know. I literally, I literally just opened this guy up five seconds ago, so I think this is going to have to sit on my shelf a little bit while I actually really formulate a, a firm opinion here. Right now, like I said, what's going on with this? Hmm. The corners of his cape have some kind of business going on here. Maybe that's to make it drape more naturally. Maybe it's like a weight or something. Both sides have it. That's really, that's kind of interesting. I bet it is there to make to make sure the cape drapes in some kind of natural fab in some kind of natural fashion, and it is a very long cape at that. I mean, look at the way it, it hangs down and wraps around his body. Again, I mean, I like it, but given how detailed the rest of his actual sculpt is, um, I'm a little iffy with it. Even though, like, I really want to like it. So, um, well, let's take a close up look of his helmet here. Let's get a look at that famous Darth Vader mug. Uh, his eyes look to be almost like a chocolatey brown. I think they were going for a red, and honestly in person they look a little bit more red than they do on camera. So that's a little bit interesting. Um, I love the chain down around his neck that, that holds the cape in place, even though it really kind of doesn't. It's actually kind of tied into his shoulder pads. So the cape really isn't easily removed, it looks like, and I'm not going to mess with that. I don't know what kind of nightmare that's going to be to fix if it gets messed up, and I really don't want to deal with trying to find another Darth Vader if I ruin this one. I imagine this guy's going to be tough to find, maybe as, as tough as Boba Fett has been. 
Now, his helmet, of course, does come off. It's two pieces. Let's see here. I'm trying to take just the top portion off. There we go. So that can be removed. And that leaves us with the main part of his mask on there and intact. And there is some nice detail on there, too. I think they did a nice job with this. It doesn't wrap around his head fully. There's, you know, the pale white dead head sculpt already protruding from the back. Let's see if I can get him standing again. Eh, come on, Vader, you were standing. Okay. And then the remaining portion of the mask comes off rather easily to reveal his kind of sickly, what's left of his human form face. And I like it. I think they did a good job here. Again, this is pretty much the first time I'm seeing it too. There's a lot of nice subtle tones in the paint apps here. And I like the look on his face. It's just they did a good job of capturing the sickly, desperate kind of look that shocked and horrified us all the first time he took that mask off on camera. So I think they did a good job there. And if we pan down a little bit, we see some of the, the nice details on his little control panel thing and around his belt. Over, and I like the silver, the silver that extends down each of his... I'm, I'm calling it shoulder pads. I don't know what the preferred nomenclature is, but I'm calling them shoulder pads. So, overall, I, I mean, I, I, all the, the, the negative remarks and all the bad stuff that I've heard about this figure, I was expecting to not like him. I thought, me, I'll get him if I find him, and then I'll probably, you know, get the, the Mafex or Mafex or whatever you call it, that fancy, really expensive one that's coming out. I just figured that would probably be my default Darth Vader. But I'm kind of pleasantly surprised by this guy, just because my expectations were reduced so low. I'm pretty stoked on this. I'm glad I have him. Uh, I haven't tested out much of his articulation yet, because, again, I just opened him. But it looks like he's got most of the standard articulation here. And I'm pretty sure VB went over that in depth and at length in the, the written article. So again, this is Darth Vader from the Star Wars Black Series 6-inch line. Now let's get some size comparisons here. So, okay, there's some context. He does dwarf Luke nicely. They actually look pretty cool together. I like that. Now, VB was saying that this is more or less Darth Vader as he was depicted in Return of the Jedi at the end when, you know, his mask is removed. But they gave him that that hand, that reaching hand, uh, that I am your father hand. Which, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of glad they did. Because I figure, I mean... Uh, let's be honest, we, we don't know how long any particular toy line is going to survive for. So if this ends up being the only Darth Vader we ever get, at least it's hitting on a, a few notes here. We get the removable mask from Jedi and the I am your father hand from Empire Strikes Back. And I, I'm actually okay with it being an amalgam of Darth Vader's from two different movies. It doesn't really bother me. I'm not a strict, has to be 100% movie accurate guy. I actually give a lot of leeway for, for stuff like this. So I think, I think now that I've had him out of the package and I've been tinkering with him a little bit, I, I think this guy might actually meet most of my Darth Vader needs for a six inch figure. Um, the, the, the skirt could be better. That's my only real knit here. The skirt I'm not thrilled with. And that's coming from someone who is, a, again, someone who is a fan of soft goods. That's the only real bugaboo here. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty solid offering Hasbro's given us for a six-inch Vader figure. But again, that could just be because I'm kind of super easy to please when it comes to stuff like this. So, we're going to have to leave it up to you. What do you think? Leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you think about this figure. This is going to be a hotly debated figure. Probably the most debated figure this year. 
So leave a comment below, subscribe to us here at the Foosh, and as always, thank you for checking us out, and we will see you very soon.